Hello, it's Gabby here for you. Before we jump onto this week's podcast, I just want to let you know about two ways that you can work with me. First of all, I do one-to-one coaching and I do that via Zoom so we can jump on a Zoom call at a time to suit you. The second thing I've got for you is an online coaching course that's 12 modules that you can download straight away now. There will be a link somewhere around these podcast notes. And this is the course that I've designed and it's got everything in it that I wish I'd have known when I finished cancer treatment and I was lost. So you can download that course now and you can start working towards making this your happiest and healthiest year ever. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye bye. Hello there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. This week I want to talk about a subject that comes up very often for people that I'm working with and that is can you really choose to have a great life no matter what difficulties or what challenges have been thrown at you. I really believe you can choose to have a great life if you put some strategies in place. I'm going to talk about two simple strategies today for you that I hope you will find useful because I've certainly found them useful in my life of overcoming difficulties and challenging times. So the first one, and I've talked about this before, is about gratitude. And some people think when you talk about gratitude, it's very all meek and mild and it's been all lovey-dovey and nicey-nicey. Not at all. I don't think gratitude is all about that. It can have elements of that, of course. But I really think gratitude, once you get to grips with it and once you start to really incorporate that into your life, having a gratitude practice really can be so empowering. And at times of difficulty, you know, maybe you've had a health scare, maybe you've had a a difficult diagnosis, maybe you've had a, a relationship breakup. You might think, well, these are things that I've got no choice. I haven't got any choice of these things. They've just happened to me. But we all have choices of how we respond. And we all have choices about what we focus on. And that is key, I think. So gratitude helps me to focus on on the good in my life, even when there are really difficult things going on, difficult situations and other things that you can't control. The second thing that I would really just invite you to think about is having a plan. Uh, having a plan for happiness. People sometimes think, well, life just happens. And if you're anything like me, maybe you're thinking, blimey, it's May already, you know, June will be around the corner. Half the year has gone already. And for many people, they spend more time planning a holiday or planning a new car than they do actually about their life, planning their life. What do they want their lives to be like? And there's no judgment here. You know that I'm not here to judge you, but I'm just here to share mistakes that I've made and mistakes that I see other people making as well. For my cancer diagnosis, it was a terrible time, but I can honestly say it's not the worst thing that's happened to me in my life. I've had some much more challenging circumstances and challenges to deal with. But cancer diagnosis is is devastating on so many levels. I'm not making light of it at all, but what it did give me was lived experiences. It taught me a lot about life. It taught me a lot about health. I studied health like an absolute maniac because um, I was told by so many doctors, um, Dr. Google as well, which you're not supposed to do, but I did, that inflammatory breast cancer had a very high rate of recurrence. And I just wanted to throw everything at this. I wanted to learn everything that I could about health, how I could minimise my stress, how could I stop getting so stressed as I had been in the past? How could I just be happier and healthier on a day-to-day basis? So I've learned tons of stuff. That's part of the reason I do this podcast. It's why I write a blog. It's why I've become a coach and why I help and support and coach people to live their best lives because I do believe we've all got choices. And so happiness, as I said, is a choice. Okay, and that's backed up by science. That's not just be me being all, you know, smiley about this and saying, oh, we can all be happy. No, science will tell us, you know, the studies have been done by psychologists over many years. Many studies have shown that if you can actually focus on gratitude, you rewire your brain. You know, there's a lot of technical stuff, yeah, words that I could use like neural pathways, the way that we think. And again, some people think that's just well, it's the way I am. I've always been a worrier. I always look on the dark side. There's nothing I can do. But I'm here to tell you, I used to be very prone to depression and anxiety and quite often would always look on the negative side of life. But I've trained myself now. I've worked really hard on my 
habits, daily habits. And part of that daily habit that I've got now is to think about gratitude. And so I've spoken about this before, kind of like saying your prayers at the end, end of every day. You know, I will get into bed and think about everything that I've got to be so grateful for, whether it's as simple as having good Wi-Fi that lets me talk to you, whether it's, you know, a wonderful sunny day that I've had just sitting in the garden or reading a good book or watching a film that I found really interesting or inspiring, listening to some of my favourite music, a good cup of coffee and a lovely meal that I've had. So many things that you can be so grateful for. Yes, I've got challenges. Yes, I've got things that I need to deal with. Some of that's outside of my control. But what I can control is what I think about and what I focus on. And quite often when we've got difficulties, we might think, oh, I've got this thing going round and round in my mind. What can I do? I can't stop thinking about this terrible thing that's happened or going to happen. Because, again, I think worrying about the future is something that I used to do a lot of. And I catch myself doing it now. I'm not saying I've cracked it completely, but I catch myself doing it. And I refuse to worry about things that have not happened yet. Yes, I want to plan for the future. I've got a lot of plans in place on so many levels in my life, financially, you know, my health, my fitness, my diet, all the things that I want to plan for the future. There's a saying that I love, which is do something today that your future self will thank you for. And so I know today if I have a healthy meal, if I do some exercise, it doesn't have to be too onerous. It could be 10, 15 minutes of doing some exercise. But my future self will thank me for doing that. I don't want to be a sick old woman, but I do want to have a long and happy and healthy retirement or semi-retirement. I don't think I'll ever retire. Uh, but I can, I've got input to that. I don't have to just, if you like, play roulette and, and see what happens to me. I, I want to give myself the best chance of having a happy and healthy future. So a simple shift in the way that you think about things can dramatically improve your health, your mental health and your happiness. If you are conscious of the fact when you're going down that negative route, catch yourself, stop yourself doing it and replace that thought with a gratitude thought or a happy thought. It could be a happy memory. It could be putting on your favourite music and have a little dance around your kitchen. I do that quite often to break a mood. If I'm going down a spiral of thinking about negative things, bad things, things that I'm worried about, things I'm upset about. No, put some music on. Five minutes of dancing around my kitchen gets my endorphins going. It, 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 it That feel-good chemicals gets it into your blood system. And again, I'm choosing to have a good moment in that moment. And we can all do that. So the second thing that I said before was things that you can do to help you choose happiness and help you to choose to have a great life is to have a plan. And as I say, a lot of people think oh, nothing of just spending, you know, half a day planning a holiday or planning a new kitchen or planning the garden or whatever, but actually planning your life. And what do you want to be doing in six months time? Where do you want to be in 12 months time? You know, none of us, you know, have got a crystal ball. We don't know what's around the corner. We don't know what health challenges we may have that may come upon us unexpectedly. None of us know what's around the corner. But what you can do is plan for the things that you want to have in your life and if that's happiness and that that's health what can you be doing on a regular basis for me one of my non-negotiable things now is drinking two liters of water a day dead simple thing to do so easy to do it and so easy not to do it and I struggled for a while with that so now because I work out of my diary a lot of, I'm not got a great memory so I have checklists for everything but I just tick off I drink a liter in the morning and I drink a liter of water in the afternoon tick tick done and I know it's a simple thing that my future self is going to thank me for because I know from my nutritional healing training that I did, a lot of disease or dis-ease as they call it starts with dehydration. So a dead simple thing you can do is just make sure you're hydrated, drink your water, whatever else it is you want to do, your exercise, plan it in. You know, I've got a busy life as well. I've got a lot going on, a lot of, you know, different priorities. But some things are non-negotiable. I know I must exercise at least four days a week. And again, it doesn't have to be something I don't enjoy. It can be going for a walk. It can be going to my local park. Whatever it is, it's getting myself out there and, and making that effort. And I've said before, you know, I'm not a great person in the morning. So what makes me do that is I'll lay out my exercise clothes the night before. My running shoes are next to the front door. Everything's set up. I can just get up get out and do my exercise first thing in the morning. So that's how I plan it in. And if you want any help with planning, I'm here for you because I help people with that all the time. 
different circumstances, different challenges that people have got. And my Confidence After Cancer is a course that I've got, is a 12-step plan, all aspects of well-being. And because I've done it, and I've done it with so many people, and again, it's, it's very simple things to do, things that you can just incorporate into your everyday life. So no judgment here. So remember, you can choose to have a great life. What choices are you making this week? So as always, thank you so much for listening. Love to hear from you. Remember to stay safe and stay sane. And I'll speak to you very soon. Thank you, my love. Bye-bye.